Have you ever thought about possibly reaching out to a lot of your detractors and trying to like, you know, hey, let's have a talk about this after all these years of bashing. You ever thought about trying to clear the air with some of these people or is it just like screw them? Well, brother, I see, we just let a dead dog lie. I don't, you know, believe in catching, you know, reaching out to any of them. I mean, because it was what it was and it's in the past. Mm -hmm. But if I had one question, I would ask Ron Simmons, why didn't you as a brother reach up and try to help me? If you, you know, want to criticize him a little bit, why didn't you, you know, try to help me when I was dead? I know the answer. You know, he said he was jealous. And then the whole nation room was jealous. Because, I mean, you got to see. Here this kid is coming off the streets, getting the WWF, nobody knows him, and he's being pushed hard, and he become the first black intercontinental champion, and then Woody became the first black world champion, you know, and they didn't appreciate that, because they had been in the business for 14 years, you know, 10 years, and here this kid, he ain't been in the business for a year, and he gets this kind of push. So they were very jealous. So I don't blame. I don't blame for being jealous. I probably would have been jealous too. Mm. Kevin Nash has a podcast called "Click This." Um, <coughs> he said he's gonna let it. Very intelligent <coughs> guys. For a second, he said he's gonna let it be. It's something because even um, they had uh, some back and forth words before he was gone. Even Hogan and Warrior straightened things out. And then, um, I think they talked once or twice something else. They had that documentary, Jake the Snake and Warrior, uh, he was shook hand. I don't know if, uh, if, if Ted shook his hand, though, no, because Ted was saying stuff just as bad as, uh, as Jake said. He said, well, he hated him and this and that. It's like, he's like, he said, it's like getting slapped in the face. I was like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, was it, it, I'm surprised they, um, people still sweating old stuff. Because, uh, you thought they would have been, um, uh, not buddies, but uh, that's uh, that's back in the day stuff. Forget about it. It's old. You know, that's, that was, let's see, ninety five or not ninety five, ninety seven, right? Ninety eight. Yeah, that's like twenty five, twenty six years, probably longer than that. Uh, yeah, stuff is old. <laughs> like, like Chris Rock said, uh, <laughs> Tucker said, "Why are you bringing up old shit?" Uh, you talked about Scott Hall. He had a very close relationship with Kevin Nash, as you know. How was yes. Kevin Nash as a human being? How was Kevin Nash what? As a human being. As uh, a Kevin person. seemed to be really cool, man. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have any problem with Kevin. And he seemed to be a pretty cool dude, man. Was anybody stupid enough to test you physically behind the scenes? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Just a lot of shit talking, but nobody willing to pony up. Right, but what, the thing about it is nobody did that while I was there. I mean, if you're going to take shit talk me, do it in my face. So let me know what's up. You know what I'm saying? So this was revealed years later. Was there. Years later, this all came out. You must have been like, what the... Yeah. I'm well, like, that... you know, what the hell is all this all about? But they seen a, a, a running horse and they decided to jump on it. <laughs> you right. know, half the guys don't even know me. Especially with the internet. You just pile on. Yep. We had D'Lo Brown on last week. He's um, <laughs> <laughs> laughing already. So, D'Lo, D'Lo made a comment about you, which Farrell brought up earlier, that he felt that you really didn't want to be in the industry. You didn't care about the industry. It was all about yourself. And he took care of things in the locker room with you. <laughs> you know as well as I do, I was trying to set up a... A call in from the great Ahmad Johnson. Read it this way. Yeah, I love this. And this I screwed up the time. I apologize. As usual, I screwed <laughs> things up. But if you were to have that call in, what would you have sent to D'Lo last week? Damn. I first would have asked him, what's the definition of beating somebody up? You know, I've never been, first of all, if I've been beat up in the locker room, you guys would have known all about it, being sure, you know, in podcasts and you're in the business and you know all those little secrets and traits. It would have got out to you guys and the other podcasts so quick, or the Facebook and it so quick, if you don't have beat me up in the locker room. I'd like to know where you get the thing that he beat me up at. Hmm. we got to get these two on at the same time. 
<laughs> you, need, you need to. How did you put this? Oh, yeah, what is going on? What the hell is going on here? Off. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is great. That's all right. I'm fucking up tonight. I'm reading questions like I don't even know what the hell they say half the time. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, bro. I'd love doing your show. Get him and me together. I would love that. That would have been great. We're going to work that out and we're just going to let you guys talk it out. I mean, that. This is what I don't understand. Is it a wrestling thing? You. You you have these feelings about Ron. I'm sh I'm not trying to speak for you, but I'm sure as a young guy in the business, you know who Ron Simmons is. Yeah. You know what he meant for the business. Yeah. You have this opportunity to work with him, and you see there's a problem. How come you guys can't talk in the locker room and say, hey, man, what's the issue here? Well, we, we could have talked in the locker room. I was willing to do that. But, you know, once you get mad, kick him, and last week my kidney, and then I hear him saying, you know, after I left, I hear him saying that he did it on purpose because he was jealous. Ooh. I mean, that really burns me up, man. Ooh. I want them on the couch, the two of them. Let's do it. Wow. Does it hurt you personally that he said that, that he tried to finish you on purpose? Oh, yeah, that devastated me, man. I mean, I wasn't expecting to hear that. You know, especially from another uh, black wrestler. I wouldn't expect to hear that at all, man. You try contacting him? Well, after I took that as an accident. Public? Did you try contacting Do him I? after he went? Did you try contacting Ron after he went public with that? Like, to reach out to him? Like, what the hell is this? No. That's, I mean, they, they all got their, their versions of the story. You listen to Mark Henry's story. Uh, I heard Farouk first by breaking his ribs. No. no. I didn't. I got the kick first, and if you look at... Um, the street fight with me and the road warriors, I slid through a table. Yes, I've seen that that video uh, <clears throat> uh, months and months back. He said he he, he kicked his liver or, or kicked him in the ribs or whatever. And uh, he said, uh, uh, Farouk, you know, same person, Ron Simmons, stomped him out. And then another version of. Uh, or the nation ran him out the company. No, I don't know about all that now. Come on now. I wish I could talk to uh, Farouk. Uh, talk to uh, Ahmed Johnson myself. He'd probably say, what the hell is this? He ain't run him nowhere. He said uh, He said uh, both reasons what happened. He wasn't doing that stupid. He wasn't doing that story. And uh, what was the other thing? Uh, a family situation. So, so, yeah, he's told why he left a hundred times already. So... He ain't running him out of nowhere, and then tell about he's he got stomped out. No, I don't know. I don't know about all that. And yeah, I tried to hurt him, so I broke some of his ribs and I threw him through the table. But that was all from a receipt that he gave me earlier. Right, right. You sued the WWE um, for racism. What was the reason behind that? Did I do what now? According to what I've read, uh, you had some issues with the WWE with some racism issues. And it could not be true. Maybe I'm getting wrong information. But you sued them. Is that true? No, I never tried to sue them. Okay. Just trying, you know, just information I thought I heard. You moved the No, WWE I never tried to sue them, but I mean, yes, there was, was racism going on. But I never tried to sue them. Because what kind I mean, of what kind of racism was going on? It was, you know, it wasn't necessarily with Vince. It was with the boys, with Sean and all of them. It wasn't necessarily with Vince. I don't think. I think it was more boys. Did you ever? Were you ever you know, the victim of like you know the N word or you know anything of that level? Yes. When I won the, the Intercontinental Championship, I went out to my car, and somebody had scratched on the congratulations, nigger. Wow. That is pathetic. And you certainly thought that was one of the boys, right? I, I believe it was one of the boys. Why wouldn't a guy... I, mean, I can't prove it. Right. What's that? Understood. I said, I can't prove it, but, Not you know... prove it, but... Yeah. Why would a guy your size... Mm -hmm. And I think I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. Would it take Shawn Michaels in the back and just slap the living shit out of him and put him put him straight? Or are you instantly fired? If you the, Harris boy, the Harris boys exactly. already did it. <laughs> that interview. Uh, who was that? I was watching. A man tell the other week. He said that uh, the Harris brothers, they already did it. 
uh, <laughs> said, he talking shit. He said he jacked his ass up and said, the next time it's going to get worse than this. <laughs> and Dutch Mantel wasn't joking. He probably, I don't think, no, I don't think Dutch Mantel would make that up because he was there. <laughs> See, he managed it back when they had the, uh, the big long hair and, and everything. This, this is before they, um, they were bald headed, shaved their head or whatever. But, um, he yeah, said so he jacked his behind up on that wall. Said, "We he, we we hear about this again. It's gonna get worse." <laughs> so they already did. And then they got fired. Yeah, so the Harris brothers got fired for that because you know, because Michael's the top dog. Let me see what 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 year was so, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, he's the top dog then. So yeah, that's not. Uh, yeah, that wasn't good. But yeah, they pissed. They 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 must have pissed them boy. Uh, he must have pissed them off real bad. Like I said, Shawn Michaels was back then with the Rockets to the WWF, you know, now. I mean, he had the pool, he had the position, and you knew if you messed with him that he would have seen that you were fired. Mm. There you go. And he actually had the power to stop your WWE championship run. Yes, he, he could have. He could have. Well, he really did. Really well, he so I, I was... I, I was supposed to take him on for the championship. Right. But, you know, what I heard, he told Vince that, you know, America wasn't ready for a black champion. So that never wow. happened. Come on. But now. it was setting up for me and him to go at it. Did Vince ever tell you that he was thinking about putting the strap on you to make you world heavyweight champion? Did you ever hear that from Vince? No, he, he kept that pretty low key. Um, even when I became Intercontinental Champion, before we went out the curtain, they usually tell you who's going over. And Vince didn't tell me or Dustin who's going over, except right toward the end of the match, the referee said, I made you going over. And that's how we found out I was going to become the first black Intercontinental Champion. And he did the same thing with the world belt. He wouldn't have told me until it was that time. What was Goldust's reaction during the match? Of um, what? I'm just curious when you're going on the fly like that. I mean, somebody could be like, "Nah, I'm not doing that." What the fuck? Yeah, he was goes up, man. He did the job for me, and I appreciate that so much. Cool. That he I'm took the bump for me and did the job. I'm man. surprised they didn't, they didn't they didn't ask him about uh what about this uh this 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 gold dust thing and before he got you on the face for real. And then you and you plowed through the door and knocked the door off the hinges and had uh I think he was called. Spark Holly or uh, whatever he was called back then, uh, Holly up against the uh, up against the, the the wall by his throat. I'm surprised because <laughs> he said, "Where is he?" And he he knocked that damn door off the hinges, boy. What happened in WCW? I remember when you appeared. It's like, oh shit, he's back. This is great. Why didn't that work out? Because number one, I wasn't ready. To come back, man. Um, Stevie Ray. That was weird Stevie seeing him up there. at a restaurant, and we talked about it. And I told him, "No, no, no," several times. And then I thought about it. And me and Stevie Ray had grew up in the streets together. I mean, we knew each other way before WWF. And so I couldn't see me let my partner down like that. So I told him, you know, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. The reason I didn't want to do it was because I was out of shape. Um. My wind was was gone. I mean, I couldn't breathe or nothing because all the weight I gained. But I wish they would gave me a chance to get back in shape. I already need at least six months to get back in shape. But that didn't happen. I and mean, I had to go out there on the fly, like right now, 